Okay, welcome back everyone. I today I'm here with Alexandra Gros, who is a French neuroscientist who obtained a PhD in 2015 in Paris. During a PhD, she studied the role of adult hippocampal neurogenesis in episodic memory. Uh, she then moved to Edinburgh for the following in, in the following year uh, for her first postdoc position, where she kept working on hippocampal neuronal network. She also worked in Lyon, where she studied the long-term retention of uh, episodic memories and the, um, the brain areas involved in this process. Uh, she's now working in Bordeaux, France, and uh, she's also a writer for the French National Center of Scientific Research, uh, which she posts blog articles um, related to neuroscience. Um, so thanks, Alexandra. Uh, you can now share your slides. Oh, they're already here. You can just, <laughs> you can, you can just start. Thanks. Thanks. And so, hello everyone. Um, I'm very happy to take part of the Sunday talk and I would like to thank Maureen for the organization. Thank you. Uh, so tonight, I am going to talk about episodic memory in animals. So what is memory? Um, memory is as much individual uh, as it is collective. We can have a common memory while each one has a precise and individual memory. So we speak of collective memory and individual memory. So tonight I am focusing on individual memory. So if I ask you the question, many of you will tell me that memory, it's our memories. And it's true, but it's not just our memories. We should rather talk about memory system and memory is defined as the ability to record and store information and then record and use them when we need it. So the memory is split into the short term memory, so which include working memory and, for example, to remember a phone number during a, 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 a short time and the long term memory. And long term memory include declarative or explicit memory and non declarative or implicit memory. And in non-declarative memory, we find an, in non-declarative memory, sorry, we find the procedural memory the, as driving or ride a bike, for example, uh, the conditioning and the sensory memories. In declarative memory, uh, we find the episodic memory and the semantic memory. So these different type of memory inter interact with each other. Um, so episodic memory use semantic knowledge and memories can become semantic with repetition and also sensory memory or procedural memory occur during episodic memory. Uh, so memory is essential for the construction of the identity of individual in learning, knowledge, acquisition, individual performances. And memory is part, it's partly an individual construction because it is defined um, through our perception and past and also influence our behavior. So the different memories allow us to include yourself in a very precise temporality. So in a present, to have a past and a future. So the memory is a complex and fundamental system to define the human being. So how does the memory work? So the storage of information goes through an initial encoding phase that allows the short-term storage of sensory and internal information. So then comes the process of memory consolidation, which leads to a more stable long-term memory. The later can the then can be re reactivated to return to a label state and be consolidated again and updated with new information. So memory is a dynamic process over time influenced by many factors such as genetic factors, emotions, stress, sleep and the environment. And actually memory is not a perfect picture of what happened but a personal construction. So memory can be studied in different ways. So from a molecular point of view, with, for example, the study of the involvement of some uh, genes involved in memory. From a cellular point of view, with, for example, the analysis of cell assemblies involved in the storage of information or the role of adjunct 
from a neural network point of view with the analytic structures involved in the storage of information and from a behavioral point of view in more or less complex memory, memory tasks. So tonight, I focus on the behavioral aspect only. So the phenotypes, uh, characteristic and cognitive abilities of animals can be studied from a behavioral point of view. So sensory abilities can be tested in different tasks, for example, using the hot plate task for the study of proprioceptive abilities, um, an odor discrimination test for the study of olfactory abilities, or the Clift uh, test for the study of visual abilities. Motor skills can be tested by analysis the posture while animals walking or by using the rotable test um, to test the balance of the animals. Anxiety behavior can be studied by analysis animal behavior in an open field, for example, or in an elevated plus maze. And this risk taking of the animals that is going to the center of the op open field, for example, or into the open arm in the maze, it's penalized. And an animal which stay along the wall um, or in closed arm over time is an anxious animal. The repressive like behavior can be studied in a form swim test, for example, or a tail suspension test. And the faster the animal resign, and the more its behavior is associated with depression. The cognitive abilities of animals can be tested in many tasks. Attention can be tested in an operative behavior, for example, in which the animal must be attentive to visual, olfactive, and or auditory signal in order to receive a reward or to avoid a punishment. Memory can be studied in a different way too. Um, so, for example, olfactory memory can be analyzed in a social transmission of food preference test. In this task, a demonstrator consumes sent foods first. Then it is put in contact with the congener to whom it transmits the smell of the food it was previously eaten. And the observer then um, it is tested with two different types of sent food, including the food consumed by the demonstrator at the first. We observe that the animal prefer preferentially consumes the food consumed by the congener, and this behavior is also observed in nature because um, it avoids the animals to consume animal food, uh, food. So memory can also be analyzed in an object recognition test in which the animals may remember objects it was previously encountered. And fear memory can also be tested in a fear conditioning test in which the animal associates a weak electric shock with an auditory or visual stimulus. So spatial memory can be tested in different paradigms, for example, in a radial maze test in which the animals would remember the location of a reward in the arm of the foot, so here the dark arm, for example. Um, in a spatial object recognition test in which the animal much remembers the location of an object that we move um, during the test. Uh, in a Maurice water maze in which the animal was much re remembers the location of a platform in a pool. And routine everyday memory can also be tested in a task in which the animals must remember the location of the food that change every day. So there are many, many ways to study the cognitive abilities of animals, including test, uh, testing their memory, memory performances. But what about episodic memory? So as I previously said, episodic memory is declarative memory. It was defined by Endel Tulving in the 1970s as the memory of personal events. So it is defined as the process of remembering a personal event and placing it in the spatio-temporal context in which it took place. So it is defined as the memory of the what, where, when memory. It is a memory of everyday events. It is an incidental memory that is, it doesn't require learning and not particular effort to store the information and to remember. 
It is a very long-term memory. For example, we are able to recall our childhood memories. And episodic memories can be used flexibly, flexibly to adapt our behavior to a So Endel Tolving also points out that episodic memory is a typical human memory. But why he said that? Endel Tolving specifies that the recollection of the element of an episodic memory requires an autonomic state of consciousness that is a consciousness of oneself reliving the past event and so the ability to mentally travel in time. So when we remember an event, we can do it as a witness or as a participant. When we place ourselves as a simple witness, the information recorded is semantic in nature, and we are able to describe an event in an objective and detailed manner. On the other hand, as a participant, the information recorded in it is episodic in nature, and we actively relive the past event. So recalling a, me a memory involves recognition memory, which can be divided into two processes, familiarity and recollection depending on the nature of the information being recalled. The feeling of familiarity allows us to know that we are already met or experienced something, but without remembering under what circumstances, unlike recollection, which allows us to place some, something in the context in which it took place. So in order to know if the subject is reliving the episode, we can ask him or her, if he or she knows, or if he or she remembers. It is for this reason that Tolvin defined episodic memory as a capacity specific to human. So this drawing here by, by Ruth Tolvin, the wife of Endel Tolvin, illustrates this problem generated by the study of episodic memory in animals. So namely the impossibility of questioning them to know if actually they know or if they remember. So it is necessary to find and to use relevant behavioral indicator to question episodic memory in animals. So it is for this reason that some authors have introduced the term episodic like memory concerning behaviors that are part of episodic memory but whose components of self awareness to mental travel cannot be tested. So it is possible to find many examples of spaces with special behaviors and use episodic like memory in their natural environment. For example, in social spaces, hierarchical relationships are established according to the interaction between individuals. So in order to express appropriate social behavior, an animal must remember events that would have changed the pre-existing hierarchical relationships and to remember when this happened to adapt its behavior over time. So it seems very advantageous for an animal to remember the location of food source. For example, it has encountered in the past uh, whether there, there, was in, um, there were any prey or food left after its passage, for example, and how much time has passed since then. If all prey has been consumed at a given location, the animal may avoid returning to that location in the day that follow and will return after a certain period of time, since it will remember that there is often prey or food at that location. An example of this is chimpanzees. We are able to remember the location of certain fruit trees in the forest and go there at the right time when ripe fruit is available depending on the season. So it's very typical of episodic memory um, uh, behavior. And similarly, it seems very advantageous for an animal to remember the location of predators, for example, um, it has encountered in the past and at what time in order to avoid returning for a certain period of time and stay as safe as possible. So for a survival perspective, it is necessary to find the right place at the right time according to the goal to be achieved. So, but to know if animals 
really use episodic memory, we need scientific evidence. So how to study episodic memory in animals? So using the natural behavior of animals, Nicola Clayton and her collaborators develop controlled laboratory experiments in birds that relied on the natural behavior of jay, this bird, to store their food, to test their ability to remember what type of food they store, where, and for how long. So they gave the jay a series of trials in which they were allowed to catch um, highly prefer worms. So jay prefers the worms and can catch um, worms or peanuts um, in the tray. And four days later, they can catch worms or peanuts, depend on what they catch first. And in parallel, the bird learn that the peanuts remain palatable during all the experiments, while the, war, the worm degrade over time. So the bird quickly learn to recover when they prefer food after four hours, but to avoid them after five days. So four hours after to catch the worms, they choose the worms, and, four, and actually more than five days after to catch the worms, they just prefer to go to peanuts because the worms would be not okay. So in parallel, the author had a group of birds we had never experienced and worms degrade over time and then observes and the birds continue to inspect their worm seeds before their peanut seeds after both delay. So the consistent preference to recover worms even after a long time eliminated the possibilities and the birds forget, just, just forget the location of the food over time. So taking together, the J must have record what? So worms or peanuts, they are hidden where? Location in the tray and when, and uh, they are memorized all three together in one single catching event. So this was the first conclusive behavior evidence of episodic like memory in animals over uh, other than humans. So the author later had a difficulty, a difficulty by offering the J worms again, crickets and peanuts. So worms are always perishable during four and 28 hours. Peanuts are not perishable, like the first experiment, but this time the crickets are perishable in the longer term between 28 hours and 120 hours. So the author shows that four hours after the acquisition um, task, the bird will look for the worms, so because the worms are okay, uh, after 24 hours, they will look for the cricket, so here. And in the long term, they will look only for the peanuts. So this data showed that J are able to use this episodic memory by estimating very thinly the elapsed term. So in neurobiology, the model of choice is the rodent. So a number of episodic memory paradigm have been developed for rodents to study this form of memory and to analyze the mechanism underlying it. Based on Clayton and Dickinson paradigm, Stephanie Babe and her collaborators developed an episodic memory task in a radial maze. And so in which animals may remember what type of foods and anchored in which arm and for how long. So during the first phase, two arms of the maze are baited with conventional food, so not very attractive food, and two other arms are baited with flavored uh, pellets, so raspberry or grab, and these two are preferred by the rats. So the rats are then put back in the maze for a short one hour or long delay six hours in a new situation of bait arm. One hour later, the previously bait arms, so these four here, are empty, and the four other arms are baited with conventional food. You see. Six hours later, so six hours after the first presentation, the arm previously baited 
uh, with conversion full are empty, these two. The arm previously baked with flavor food pellet are baked again. Um, and the other four arm, so these four here, are baked with conversion of food. So during the taste phase, in order to access the flavor of food, the mast must remember what type of food was delivered, so the what, which arm it was, it was in, so the where, and how long since the first presentation. So one hour after this one, the first phase, the rat visits the new arm, so this four here, but six hours after the first phase, the rats preferentially visit the arm bait with the flavored food because they prefer them. So the rats remember what, where, when memory. So in this task, like the one in J, finally, by Nicola Clayton, the author do not use the exact time in day, but an evaluation of the time between the first presentation of the food in the maze and the following presentation. So this study were the starting point of a debate about the temporal dimension of episodic memory in animals. So indeed, Babe and collaborator show them the episodic behavior in rat. It's not related to the time of day, but is based on the tap on the time that an, has elapsed since the acquisition phase, and not only in the time of day when the, ta the test is performed. So other at author have also investigated whether uh, redundant episodic memory is based on when or how long by changing a little bit the paradigm of Babe and colleagues and test their when hypothesis. So some groups show that episodic memory in redundant depend on how long ago and not on when. And other authors show that episodic memory depend on when and not on how long ago. So in short, the temporal component of episodic memory is complicated. So Ekrem Deer and his collaborators are, have developed a task based on the recency of exploring object place at specific location within an um, experimental arena. So it is well known that rodents spontaneously spend more time exploring a novel object compared to an old one, or exploring more a, new, a known object but in a new place than in a previous one. So based on this observation, the author presents a first batch of objects at certain place in an arena to mice, so four place, same object. In a second step, um, around one hour later, they'll present other objects at different or identical place than the first step. During the test, they mix the two previous place with old objects are their original place, old objects at a new place, or recent objects in their original place. So the rats need to remember when they anchor in an object and in which context. So the author shows that mice spend more time exploring the oldest object in at a new place because it's completely new. Um, by the exploration, uh, following by the exploration by, um, of the old object at its old place because it's old. Um, to end up with the recently uh, encountered object. So this results subject that mice are able to remember the object already explored, so the what, to remember that correct location within the experimental arena, the where, and to differentiate between recently encountered object and those encountered earlier, so how long ago. So similarly, the author test episodic memory in their, in their paradigm in rats, but they complicated the task a bit by mixing objects and their location even more during the test. So it was really complicated for the rats. And again, they showed that rats sp uh, spend more time exploring. So the sorry, the oldest um, object 
in their old place, so the oldest object, but it's relatively new for the rats, or recent objects that have been moved to a new place for an old object, followed by exploiting the old object moved to a new place or recent object in their old place. So it's really actually complicated in this type of task to know what happened. So we test the what, the where, the both together, but it's really actually complicated. But this study um, suggests that uh, rats are able to recognize objects already explored, so the what, to remember the lo location within the experimental arena, the where, and to differentiate between recently or oldest object. So how long ago? So, other objects, uh, again about the when, develop other type of task using sequence of a temporal component. This is the case of Sirin Ergoril and Edward um, uh, Howard Eschenbaum. We use um, a succession of order uh, present um, present in sand field groups. So A, B, C, D at different place in the arena. So with a reward each, each time and located at different points. So the test files uh, use three different combinations. The rats are confronted either with two other places, so B and C, for example, and you need to remember the oldest order. So you need to, be to, you need to go to B. So this uh, paradigm tests the question, what, where? Um, or um, what are confronted with uh, two otherwise cup, uh, but it's the same place. So C and B, and you need to remember the outer. So it's a what, when, um, or with no otherwise cup. So the last one. And the animals need to remember the oldest place or order and the outer um, trims the rats are able to find the position of the cut. So Actually, again, all the tasks that want to test epigenetic memory are often complicated, but in each case, the animals need to remember the oldest place or the oldest order. And based on the performances of the animals, the author can tell if the rats are able to find the position of the cup, so the where, um, the position of um, the the order so the what and um if it's a old or recent order so the what um celine fouquet and our collaborator develop an episodic memory task based on navigation in a star-shaped uh, water maze to access the animal's ability to learn and remember a spatial sequence according to an egocentric navigation in a given temporal order in, to arrive at a given location. So to make things simpler, always, the rats always start by the same um, starting point in the maze here. The animal must find the location of the platform, for example, here, uh, which does not, does not change place uh, all over the time. So the animals can either use the special cues of the environment to find the platform. So you just need to remember that, for example, there are a cross here and um, other uh, queue here, and you need to go to this queue. But um, then can also use um, the, as they can also remember which movement, so turn left or right, to um, must to made, so what, at which intersection in the labyrinths were where and when it must be made according to the order of the sequence, when, to arrive at the location of the platform. So during the record test, the start change. So it's not here, for example, it's here. And the location of the platform in the main stays stable. So the strategy adopted by the animals to retrieve the platform uh, location determine if the animal use an allocentric or an egocentric sequential strategy and so if the animals use episodic memory to achieve it or not. So 
The last thing, it's uh, recently Jonathan Crystal Group shows and writes, remember many unique events and the context in which they occur using episodic memory. And these studies suggest and write, remember at least 32 uh, items in context and shows and writes are able to remember the order of event using episodic memory replay. So, all this data has led to questioning the real capacity of the animals to encode and to restore the one component of episodic memory and to question the very importance of um, this component in this form of memory. Indeed, in human, it is very difficult to remember when a particular event took place. Uh, if I ask you the first time that you drive, for example, you will not remember exactly the time, but more um, easily the context, the weather, for example, this type of element. Um, so, uh, based on this observation in human, um, Madeline Eckert's team uh, proposed a new paradigm of episodic memory in which the temporal as aspect is replaced by the contextual aspect. So, what were when memory become what were in which context memory. So, using the natural ability of presence to preferentially explore new elements in their, in, in their environment, the author shows and writes are able to use contextual information to describe unique events. So, in this task, writes first freely explore an arena containing pair of objects at specific location according to the context of arena. So here, a cube at left and a tube at right in the gray context. And the tube at left and the cube at right in the white context. So really simple for now. And later, the rats are tested in the gray context with the cube at its good place according to the first context here and a second cube at right it's instead of the tube so this new cube is not normal in this context and refer to a second visited context so the author show that rats explore more this object in this context because the cube is not normal in this context so rats are able to remember the object, so the what, in the right place in the arena, the when, depending on the context, in which context. So uh, rats are able to uh, have what, where, in which context memory. But the author shows that beyond 60 minutes after the acquisition phase, so it's really quick, the rats no longer distinguish uh, between the two objects. So maybe it's just short-term memory. So um, based on this uh, observation, um, we can um, have some restriction on study on non-animal, um, on non-human animals, sorry. So um, several authors show that rodents are able to form episodic memory or episodic-like memory in different tasks, but there are critical limitations since they don't take the main characteristic of human episodic memory, um, such as the capacity to remember unique events on the very long term with limited exposure. Indeed, studies in Rodan show a retention, a retention time um, of no more than a few hours or even minutes in animals, with the exception of a um, few studies um, that are test episodic memory after a 24 hours delay, but even if 24 hours represent a long-term retention time in animal study, this duration is very little compared to the storage time uh, of episodic memory in human, uh, which can be several years. And second, another limitation of study in Roland is the number of repetitions required to accurate the episodic task. 
Uh, indeed, most studies in rodents involve long learning and require many repetition, up to sometimes 80 days of learning and about 100 trials <laughs> in some tasks. So, um, with the exception of tasks using object recognition, but in this particular um, recognition task, memory stay um, not for a long time. So, um, a major characteristic of episodic memory is that we are able to remember a single event over a very long period of time after a single life experience. So, considering this uh, limitation, we are developed in our group a new episodic memory task in rats, close to some tasks developed in human. So for this, we use several characteristics of episodic memory to design it. We use context as a temporal component. The what component is based on outer, which are very important uh, memory clue in rodents. We design our task without learning needed. We test episodic memory over a very long period of time. And finally, we test episodic memory in interfering situations that require flexible use of memories. So, our arena has port in which a no spoke by the rats triggers the delivery of orders associated um, to a pipette that can give access to a sweet, just sugar, or a bitter solution, and the bitter solution is skin in solution. So we use uh, speakers and a video projector to create a specific different uh, context um, uh, for the rats and different sound, texture, picture, or object create a specific context for a given unique episode. Uh, so here you are four uh, different examples of context with rats inside. So, how our many memory uh, tasks work. So in two different contexts, by spontaneously exploring the arena, the rats experience where and with what order the switch solution is delivered. So in context one, only these two ports are opened. They delivered randomly order A or B. The order E the order B is always associated with skinning in the two ports, while the other A is associated with skinning in the port here, but associated with sugar in this port here. So only the other A delivers sugar only in this port here, whereas all the other configuration delivered skinning. So we create a first what were context memory. In context two, so you can see that it's a different, uh, really different context with different sound, different texture, etc. The two other four are opened. They deliver randomly order C or D, and the order D is always associated with skinning, while the order C is associated with skinning in this port and with sugar in this port. So we create a second what, where, in which context uh, memories. So since orders, port, and context are specific to each episode, rats form a what, where, in which context episodic memory. And importantly, the animals explore freely the episode. And it's a crucial point for episodic memory. We don't condition the animals to learn something. They just make their own representation of each episode. So the memories of each rat are personal according to its exploration of the episode. So during the exploration of the episode, we record the number of links on the pipette for each configuration called, so P plus O plus uh, for the combination with sugar, the P plus O minus, P minus O plus, or P minus O minus for the configuration with skinny. So, as expected, the rats drink more the sugar on the good port with the good odor compared to the other configuration. So in this video, you are one rat 
that I drink um, with the good odor. So you can see that he, he smell and after he drink and he will not stop to drink uh, before the end. So it's 10 seconds. Okay, and it's finished. So it's one rat's drink. And here it's uh, the behavior of the rats um, with uh, the bad odor. So it smell, and you can see that it's different. It just uh, hesitates, and after it just avoid, and is not happy with the pipette, and after it just sleep. So um, during uh, after different delay, we test the episodic memory in a similar context than the second episode, but this time there are only water uh, available. So we observe first a variability in rats' performances. So each point, it's a, it's a rat in the different configuration. And so we dissociate different profiles of recollection. So for example, the orange rats, so here, here, and the two points here, um, present a what were profile because um, they drink, uh, eat drink more in the good pot with the good odor um, and avoid to drain to the other configuration. Um, the green uh, rats, so here, here, and two point here, uh, exit a wear profile because he link uh, in at the good port, but with the two outer uh, in different quantity. So after only one presentation uh, of each episode, so. 20 minutes of episode one and 20 minutes of episode two, 30% uh, of rats present a what were profile associated with the context, so an episodic memory. And the other rats remember only, for example, the good pot, the where profile associated with the sugar, but don't care about the odor, or remember only the odor, but don't care about the pot. So, one more presentation of the episode. So twice the episode one during 20 minutes and twice the episode two um, is sufficient for all rats to remember the entire episode with all rats classified in the what were profile. And moreover, this memory is very robust since 60% of the rats are able to remember this information at least 24 days later. And actually, I test more longer, three months delay, and rats are still able to remember the good location and the good order. Um, so actually, it's really robust. And it was the first time that we observed episodic memory in rats at very long term. So we also test the episodic memory in a more challenging situation than mixed information from the two experienced episodes. All port was open this time with the outer associated to the port in a single context that we want to test the episode two. So you can imagine that for rats, it's very confused situation because he never um, uh, experienced the outer A and B in this context and this port open in this context. So it's very confused. So we observed a very high variability in the answer given by the animals during the test. And we classify the different animals in profile based on their performances. So the rats and drink mostly in the good port with the good other outer associated with the context. So the P plus O plus in context is classified as a what, where, in which context rats while rats then drink mostly in the good port with the good odor, but in both contexts. So it's drink here, for example, and here, where the, the sugar was, is classified as the what were profile. So the performances of rats show that 60% correctly recollect episodic information 24 hours later. We tried 24 days later, and this was really a mess for the rats. So 60% um, of the rats uh, present what were in which context and what were profiled. So these two profiles are good for the rats because actually 
they use uh, the what wire profile use flexibly um, their memories to remember that actually the sugar was at two different um, uh, position and then during this test the situation was completely new for the rats so we conclude that rats are able to form a sufficiently robust episodic memory and to use it flexibly to cope with an interfering uh, situation. But as in human, some rats only remember partial information of the episode. So to finish, I would like to show you different examples of episodic different spaces. So episodic memory has been shown in different uh, bird species, uh, jay, black cap, uh, chickadees, carvaid, and pigeons. Uh, recently, episodic memory has been highlighted in dogs. Uh, dog can remember complex past events such as action, even when they do not expect to remember them and to reuse them. So the weakness of some of these studies is that they require extensive training of the animals and a task uh, that they are familiar with and sustain attention of the dogs. So which does not allow the um, unconsciousness um, encoding of memory to be accessed. So the notion of where and when um, have not been really evaluated in this type of task, except in this task um, here by uh, William Roberts, uh, we use a sequent task uh, used in rodents. So episodic memory has been demonstrated in cats. Uh, cats are remembering information about where they searched before and also which location used to have food. So um, uh, Sao uh, Tagaji asked uh, whether cats could retrieve not only where information, but also what information from a single past event. So specifically, uh, the author used uh, two containers, um, each bait, so this one and this one, with a piece of food and one container with a non-edible item and one empty uh, container. And in an expected test, cast, uh, cats first visit um, and preferentially explore the only uh, bait uneaten container, suggesting that they retrieve and use incidentally encode memory and involve involving what as well as when information in an integrated fashion. Um, Michael Furkin and his collaborator show that in the polygenous feed wall, male, male uh, know the location of different females and are able to match their visits to the period of uh, sexual receptivity of each of these females. So for this purpose, the outer plays two females uh, female one and female two, at the end of the two arm of the T-shaped mate. Uh, one of these female is sexually uh, receptive, while the, uh, the other is less than 24 hours away from parturition and uh, not receptive. But given 12 hours after um, uh, giving birth, the female show a peak of uh, sexual receptivity. So when the male is placed back in the maze 24 hours after the initial phase, uh, that is shortly after the female have given birth, he visits more the location within the female was about to give birth because by the time the ball is placed back in the male, she is very receptive. On the other end, when the male is put back in the maze uh, 48 hours after the acquisition phase, that is when both females have the same level of receptivity. He visit both locations where the female were. So middle walls show an episode behavior, which female, so what, is receptive when and in which arm of the maze were. And actually it's very useful for the male in nature. Episodic memory is demonstrated in primate uh, too. So Gemma Martin Ordas proposed to monkeys either orange, uh, orange juice ice cube that they really like, but which melt in one hour. 
and then become, become inaccessible and, um, during this time, or grapes that are permanent, permanent, permanently sorry, accessible. So the author hide this reward in different place on a platform in front of the animals and give access to the platform after different delay. They observe that five minutes after hiding the reward, the animals preferentially go to the place where the orange juice, juice is, while, why? One hour later, they go to look for both type of reward. So the author shows that performances is better in adolescents and young adults in this test. So the monkey are able to remember where they can get an orange juice they like, so the what, where it is hidden, and how long it has been hidden. Episodic memory has even been demonstrated in cuttlefish. To do this, Crystal Jose, uh, Jose Alves and her collaborator place cuttlefish in an experimental arena, which two locations deliver either traps here or shrimps. Cuttlefish love shrimps a lot. So at first, the cuttlefish go into the arena, both rewards are present and they eat both, but prefer shrimp. After a more or less delay, the cuttlefish are put back in the arena. One hour after the first exploration, there are only crabs present as reward. Three hours after, um, there are crabs and shrimps. When the cuttlefish are put back in the arena one hour later, um, sorry, one hour left, uh, later, uh, they preferentially go to the locations and deliver the crabs, since they expect to find nothing else, actually, because the shrimp are not available. And three hours later, they prefer to go to the locations and deliver the shrimp, since at this time, they are available again, and they prefer them. So the author concludes that cuttlefish are episodic memory since they are able to remember what type of food is delivered, where, and for how long. And to finish, episodic memory are also being demonstrated in insects and bees in particular. For this, in a transform um, y maze, um, bees can forage in the right part with a yellow horizontal visual stimuli during the morning only. And during this afternoon, they can forage in the left part with a blue vertical stimuli um, during only during the uh, afternoon. Then the bees are tested during the morning or afternoon with blue, yellow, black, vertical, horizontal visual stimuli. And the outer observes that the bees forage more food in the morning with the vertical yellow stimuli than the other stimuli. And during the afternoon, the bees forage more with the horizontal blue stimuli. And this result indicates that the bees are able to remember which uh, visual stimuli allows them to forage and at what time of day. So the example I have presented are not exhaustive, I think, and sometimes present some bias or imperfection that shows that animals are important cognitive and memory abilities. This study also shows the importance of behavioral indicator to access the cognitive um, abilities of animals and cannot speak to us directly, in particular by using their natural capacity and to pay attention to observation in natural environment. So, Furthermore, in this type of study, we should not expect all animals to respond in the same way. This is already not the case in human, and episodic memory is a personal process of memorization. So to conclude, also Endel Tulving's definition of episodic memory was an obstacle to the study of episodic memory in animals in first Research in this field over the last 20 years shows that many species have episodic memory or episodic-like memory. Moreover, episodic-like memory is linked to more complex cognitive abilities such as flexible decision-making and future planning, which opens the door to new study 
on complex animal behavior, such as future planning, which we already have evidence um, of in several species, including cuttlefish and some um, uh, monkeys. So in these fascin fascinating debates around episodic memory, the real question that remain to be answered is with, uh, whether animals mentally travel through, through, uh, through time to record their memories and to plan their future, but that they are not ready to tell us. So I would like to thank all the people we work on this project on episodic memory in Orsay and Lyon, as well as the founder for making my past and current research uh, possible. And thank you all. Thank you, Alexandra. It's like very interesting, um, very different from what we've heard yet. Yeah. So it was really nice to hear something new. Um, so guys, if you have questions, you can start putting them in the chat. Uh, there is already a first one. Um, so Philip is saying, any specific data on relationships between um, episodic light memory and long-term and tool, tool handling ability, first step to cultural memory? Can you, tell, can you repeat the question? Yeah, or, and you, you can also see it in the chat technically. So are you saying any, is there okay. any specific data on relationship between episodic like memory or on long term mm -hmm. and two? Oh, I see. Um, uh, I think if there are some uh, specific data on it, um, there are probably some, I'm not completely aware with this type of uh, data, but we know then uh, to access to some uh, episodic memory um, in some spaces, we need to use uh, correct tools, for example. So for example, if you ask a monkey to use, I don't know, keys or something like that, it will not know why to use it. So um, you need to um, use a good tool. So I think probably it's not exactly a study that we try to correlate um, uh, the abilities with the episodic like memory, but we use the ability of animals to demonstrate uh, episodic uh, memory in animals. So it's why we need to use uh, good tools. Um, but um, yeah, probably, but I don't know if there are direct relation, but probably. Okay. So, okay, going with mine. Well, if anybody has a question, you can just type them. Um, so, do, is there any study or review detailing like the range of animal presenting episodic like memory? Is it believed now that it's all vertebrates or like larger than that? Um, there are some uh, review for sure, but it's uh, the majority of the time based on readings. Um, but uh, you can find some on books or stuff like this. Um, um, me, I pass a long time to pass through um, the literature to find all this because sometimes some studies are not um, classified as episodic memory. Um, it just classifies like abilities for the animals to remember something. But after when we think about it, it's with like, okay, it's episodic memory for sure. Um, and the point is like, because uh, we don't know if the animals uh, mental travel in their memory, we can be sure if it's like episodic memory, even if we are um, evidence of it. On, of it. Um, so there are a few reviews, but uh, it's not so <laughs> easy. And fun. Yeah. I did find it quite funny when you were saying that I, your rats might need ATD of training because like whenever you do work on animals and I, I think that's what have been nice with those talks I, I think people who have not done animal research might think that it's just yeah. an animal there and it'll go and you just record it and it's done once and it's fine or yeah. <laughs> and then everything like you just put a bacterium in it it gets infected everyone is happy yeah. and they don't realize how frustrating it could be and you end up two years later with a paper that's yeah. like providing not a lot of data when it's actually huge amount yeah. of um, Anyway, um, so just trying to have this question in order. Um, yeah, so now you, um, I guess, they are kind of aware that they have this when, where, what, um, episodic memory. Uh, what's the step after that? 
because I guess that you're not going to explore that question over, over and over again. Are they are yeah. trying to decide how, how it works? Um, what yeah, exactly. So actually the point to have um, um, available task and easy task to use with animals, it's actually to question what um, a mechanism uh, underlying episodic memory, because we know, for example, that episodic memory is one of the first memory um, uh, that uh, decline uh, with um, uh, aging. So, for example, we want to understand me. For example, my project is to understand how episodic memory work. So, I just study, for example, the implication of um, adult neurogenesis on um, episodic memory. So, for this, I just irradiate some rats to. Uh, cut the um, adult neurogenesis uh, production, and um, I just pass the rats without adult neurogenesis in the task, and I just observe if the performances are um, declined or not, and it actually was the case, but <laughs> it's not yet published, so I, I don't know too okay. much about it. And after, for example, I continue research by studying um, uh, why um, the memory stay for a long time. So we try to find the hypothesis beyond uh, this. So it's because, of, I don't know, for example, there are some repetition of um, the memories over time, even when we speak about uh, memories, for example. But actually, some people just want to know if um, animals are episodic memory because for now, it's still in debate. And for me, it's not a debate because we are many evidence of it, but for some people it is. And it's a way to show that uh, animals, so non-human animals, are um, 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 intelligent um, too. So, you know, some people just say episodic memory is just in human, but it was not the case. So it's just a way to show people that um, animals are able to. And the second step is to understand. So we use, for example, rodents to understand all the mechanisms. So uh, genes involve, um, the structure involved. So for example, the implication of the hippocampus um, a, a, a brain structures and we know very involved in all type of memory. So, um, and other type of memories and prefrontal cortex, um, all this um, can be studied only if we are correct task to study episodic memory and, and we need to be sure that we test episodic memory and not another type of memory. So there are two more questions from Caroline. Uh, so she's saying first, maybe I missed the point, but are there genes that are already identified that are playing a role in episodic memory? In episodic memory, the problem is, um, I think we just start to really study, but yes, there are some evidence as, um, to the implication of some uh, genes. So for example, we know that um, immediate early genes, so immediate early genes are um, uh, genes are just uh, activated very quickly after um, a, a neuronal activity. So you are a behavior, so you just do a task, for example. So some neurons are activated. And uh, because um, uh, your neurons are activated, um, they are just um, uh, express some gene and this gene, it's called immediate early genes because it's very quick after the uh, activation. And we know, for example, for one of, of uh, the um, uh, of its, uh, genes um, called ZIF268, I work on it, so I know it. Um, it's involved in spatial memory. Um, it's uh, involved actually in episodic memory too. Um, so yes, we are some evidence. We don't have the big picture of all genes involved in this uh, episodic memory, but we are some evidence of um, some genes, some um, um, uh, micro RNA, for example, this type of things. So the, we know that this gene is involved in memory in general. So there are actually no, no ways that, that will not be involved too in this type of memory. So she had a second question. So she was asking, yep. 
if there are any pathologies that are um, where episodic memory is impaired. Yep, uh, there are. So aging, just normal aging, we know that episodic memory will be impact um, uh, very uh, quickly, actually. Um, and because it actually it's a complex uh, memory, um, uh, we need several structure, we need uh, several elements uh, in the brain. So if you are um, uh, a problem in your brain, it will be very dramatic. And for example, Alzheimer's disease, episodic memory is the first uh, memory impaired uh, during Alzheimer's disease. So. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I think I'm with mine actually, um, in case you have more questions, Caroline. Uh, you, there are plenty of way to alter specifically some areas of the brain with drugs and everything. Um, yeah. Has it been done to identify the structures in the brain that are yeah. associated with uh, episodic memory? Yes, uh, actually we did it. Uh, we just block uh, the uh, hippocampus and actually we show that without the hippocampus, uh, memory, episodic memory is impaired. Um, I think there are maybe some data about uh, prefrontal cortex, uh, but um, there are not so more. Actually, the point is because we know that uh, hippocampus is involved in memory, um, when we develop a new task, um, people ask first if um, this task is dependent of the hippocampus. So we block the hippocampus to be sure that our mem episodic memory is hippocampus dependent. Mm. So uh, because of this, we did it and we know that hippocampus is involved in episodic memory. Um, so yeah, you can block. Uh, and uh, reactivate the hippocampus, for example, to see if animals can um, remember better um, during time. Uh, and the second way too, um, it's uh, what I did during my uh, second PH, uh, postdoc uh, at Lyon. I just uh, put electrodes directly in different brain structure during the behavior of the rats. And actually I can record all the structure in the same time during the behavior. So in real time, I have all the signal uh, in different structure, and now I need to analyze everything. <laughs> so I need six months to do it. But... It's not the famous paper that is dragging. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so you need to, uh, I need to analyze, but after I, you can say this structure is involved at the beginning of the behavior, for example, this structure is more involved in the where uh, components, the what components, the what where components, this type of thing. So, yeah. Okay. That's of work. And actually, because um, episodic memory studies um, take long time, um, it was a good point to say that it's very long. When you work with animals on behavior, it's really, really long. One experiment with um, my episodic memory task take um, one, two, three, or four months for one group of rats. Um, so because you need to wait, um, uh, even if it's not every day, but you need to wait uh, 24 days to record um, the, the long-term episodic memory. So, Actually, everything can be long uh, with animals and behavior. So it's why it's take two, it's, it, it's take time to develop tasks to test, to be sure that it's okay to test episodic memory and at the end um, to study all uh, the mechanism behind. And after it's again, a lot of work so yeah it's it's long for everything so. <laughs> yeah, i feel that it, these actually are two different uh like work packages like the one that are actually trying to say those tasks and tasks and see what happens and those who are really interested in unraveling how it works I feel like two yeah. very different areas because each one of them is already so much because like it will yeah. take a lot yeah yeah to and actually for example to study um, the implication of some uh, genes. Um, there are <laughs> too many genes. So you try to, to say, okay, I want to study this one. And actually you say it's work. Um, so it, this gene will be implicating at the beginning of memory, but at, not at the end, or it will be um, implicating during the reconsolidation, for example, or doing only during the consolidation. So 
actually it's not a, sem a sample story and you say I, I deplete this gene and I will see this. Um, it just, um, I, I have a gene and I try to understand how it's work and it's always more complicated with life than just, um, okay, it's like this. So we are no, today we are no um, uh, full image of how memory work. Uh, even sample information memorization. Um, we don't know all about um, uh, the structure involved, the genes involved, how um, the cells interact um, between them uh, to have memories, actually. So um, it's a very long research. Yeah, it's very interesting. I think like, when you're not in that field, you would have no idea how to approach it, actually, because it's been, like so complicated yeah um, I'm gonna ask one last question because I already started to keep it within an hour but I, I still have a few yeah. questions it's fun <laughs> it's just because like there are just new people here and everybody is finding it interesting uh, but for the other questions um, you can ask them on ask them to me on my Twitter account or Instagram I'll ask mine as well if that's okay with Alexandra and then we'll just share on Twitter or Instagram a bit later so I'm just going to ask the last one from Kelly uh, is asking if depression affects uh, episodic memory in animals? Um, probably. I will say probably. I'm not sure that there are a study so far, um, but I will say probably because we know that depression affects memory um, in a lot of uh, tasks, even if human. So um, uh, because it's a particular brain state, um, there are of modification with depression. Um, there are neurotransmitter modification, and we know that, for example, the dopamine play an important role in, um, in uh, memorization and, and memory consolidation. Um, so I would say, yes, depression will affect episodic memory, and we are some evidence in human, not in animals, but in human, we are evidence. So there are no reason that it will be different in animals. Thank you so much, Alexandra. Um, Thank you. We'll stay in touch for the questions. Or I will also the ties let you know when those questions have been answered. It was super nice talk. Again, it was very nice to hear something else like this. Is, I have basis on this work because I've done, uh, of course, the training for animal research, but I've not done any of this. So it was <laughs> very interesting to um, hear more about it. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, coming there are a few others uh, a few other neuro talks coming uh, soon actually i think we're gonna have like a neuro month and pay attention but yeah <laughs> you're going to have three neuro talks on the row or um very interesting um so yeah stay tuned see you next week thanks Alison. thank you Bye.